So tell us a little bit about all the many things that the MBTA does. The MBTA's basic service is it provides 1.3 million trips every day to people throughout Greater Boston. It does this through an extensive bus system, four subway lines, um, a huge commuter rail system, and as well as a handful of ferries. How does the age of Boston subway system come into play here? How does it, how does it matter for you? It's really the issue that, you know, that our customers care that the subway and the bus is reliable and it, the, the age of the system sort of strikes at the core of that. You know, we have, we have one rail line with cars from 1946. We have, cars, we have cars that are only 12 years old that are not performing as well as we'd hoped, um, and it really affects the reliability of the system. And I think what folks want is a train or a bus that shows up on time, on schedule, and gets them where they want to go in the amount of time that they've been told it's going to take them. And I think making investments in the system is the key to doing that. You know, we're, we're bringing in hundreds of new cars for the red and orange line. And as a consequence, the, newer, the new technology is going to require us to upgrade the track and signals. We're going to get to the point where, probably by 2023, where we can have three-minute headways on the red line. Right now, we have four to six-minute headways at about 75% reliability. I think we can get to three-minute headways at 95% reliability. So all the way up and down the red line, you're going to be plus or minus 90 seconds from a train during rush hour. I think that's a real, that's going to be a real benefit to customers. I also think it's going to bring marginal customers who might be considering an alternative mode of transportation. It's going to bring marginal customers into the system. So I think these types of investments are what's going to drive new ridership and provide better service to our existing ridership. And how is this paid for? Surely the subway passengers can't possibly be expected to pay for the upgrading of their own service. We did raise fares, so they are, uh, they are in fact paying for some of it, but we have capital funding available from the state through internally generated funds and as well as through federal funds. What does internally that, generated funds mean? Uh, we essentially have the capacity to borrow, mm -hmm. um, so we borrow to, uh, to fund certain projects. One of the so you One, think they'll actually be paid for by future customers? Is that is that what that they means? will they be? They will be paid for. Yes, either by f they will be paid for by future customers. Um, there's also been you know th there's also been some dedicated state funding as well mm -hmm. that is going to pay for them. This is an area where the trade off between rail and bus becomes quite clear, where where you could clearly do some version of what's going on these 46 and 56 trains on buses instead. How should I think more generally about that trade-off in transportation systems? I mean, I think there, there, there's attractive features to bus, right? You have the flexibility to redesign your system. You have the flexibility to serve populations that and do it in relatively short order. And we have areas where we are underserving customers. Um, as the Boston area has developed, there's been a bunch of transportation nodes that have grown. I mean, the ones that leap to mind are particularly north of the city. We have big populations in East Boston and Chelsea that are using the bus. We're trying to build capacity in that area in terms of bus stations and you know, large intermodal stations, but also supplement the bus routes. On the other hand, with rail, you know, there is some virtue in having a fixed rail system, particularly in a congested city center where you can get people rapidly to, to and from a place. And I think as we improve service, we talked about the red line, as we improve service on the red line, I think the benefits of that will become clearer. The issue with rail now is construction costs and available space to actually build new capacity. Late night service. So the, the T has, you know, in the past, the a f you know, familiar battle cry of people who are much younger than I am was that it's horrible for Boston that the T doesn't run later than it, than it uh, does. How should I think about this and what, what changes have been made in this area? Yes, the T, the T has gone through several iterations of late night service. Um, and I think we're still thinking about what actually makes sense and what there's actually demand for. Um, one of the issues with the previous late night service was there was relatively low demand. I think the one thing that folks don't think about because they're not, they don't, they shouldn't necessarily, but um, in a system with re really unbelievable state of good repair needs where we have to do so much work on this system to get it up into condition, running trains until one or two in the morning on a service that opens up at 5 a.m. really constrains your window to do work. Um, you also have to think about what populations you want to serve. Is this, um, is this a vehicle to promote nightlife in Boston, or is it for service workers mm -hmm. who have limited transportation options who need to get to and from places?